P.H. Nargelet, the French explorer who perished on the Titan submersible, spent decades working with a controversial company which recovered thousands of relics from the Titanic. Paul-Henri Nargelet, 77, who earned the nickname Mr. Titanic as a preeminent expert on the wreck, led several expeditions for RMS Titanic Inc., which owns the sole salvage rights. The company says it is dedicated to preserving the legacy of the ship, wreck site, and all her passengers, but its work has proved controversial. Critics have accused it of attempting to profiteer by pilfering and pillaging a ship that was involved in a tragedy that claimed around 1,500 lives. Others who stand by his side have mentioned that he was an explorer who participated in numerous expeditions to the Titanic wreck, serving as a leader in various missions. He played an important role in the scientific research and documentation of the site, helping not only to recover artifacts, but also to map the wreckage. After the deep sea expert's death in the Titan implosion, there was renewed interest in an interview he had with the Titanic Channel, where he explained what could happen if he were stuck at the bottom of the sea. It appeared as if he were described the details of his own possible death. Here's a series of clips of P.H. Nargelet explaining what it's like being stuck at the Titanic wreck, and another one with Ocean Gate, where he reveals more of his knowledge about the ship that ultimately took his life. If you are with a no-till stuck on the bottom, you can survive for a while because we can, uh, you can stay about four or five days on the bottom which uh, not help very much <laughs> because if nobody can help you uh, and uh, that five day is with the oxygen with the food with the water and everything like that but we know very well that we will die before with the temperature because the, prob the real problem at this depth is the temperature, because the water temperature is 33 degrees or something like that. And if you are in the sub and nothing is running anymore, making some heat is very cold, cold and cold, even if we have some equipment and blah, blah, blah. After a while, you dive because of the cold, which is not a bad way to dive because you you you, you fall in sleep and uh, it's not uh, you don't suffer <laughs> in this case. <laughs> we know that, but we never think that could happen. You know, it's, it never come to our head. But the pilot has to be very careful, because especially on a wreck, a wreck is a, a dangerous environment. When you are on a you know on the bottom, uh, uh, we're doing. A, uh, geology or biology, I will say there is no danger, no specific danger. But when you work around a wreck, it's dangerous. It's for uh, 34 years now, <laughs> and uh, it changed a lot, and especially the stern section, because originally in the stern section, I have to say uh, many walls or many part of the ships they were straight up. But since uh, 19 maybe 2005 and 1998, something like that, a lot start to fall down. Mm -hmm. And now almost everything is flat. Just uh, you still have the reciprocative engine on one side and the poop itself on the, on the back mm -hmm. of the stern where you still have the deck and you can see a part of the deck was upside down because when the stern go down you know the engine as the engine they were the heavy one the it was like a if you take a glass you know going down and uh, a part of the deck with uh, when you have like a uh, an implosion and uh, an implosion because you have hair trap in 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 this in the stern section when the, you have the implosion, and an implosion is always followed by an explosion. And that means that why the deck was turned back like that, and you can see now the deck is above the stern section, you know, part of it. And at the end of the video you send me, mm -hmm. you can see just when is when the, it's like a sardine cane, and when you open a sardine cane, you see exactly, and you can see this round part at the head of the, because the, the sub was turning and first it was going from the, I would say close to the reciprocative engine, 
to the hand of the stern. But after, in one part of the video, he turned back and he's going the other way. That's why we just see when the deck was uh, bent uh, a lot. Mm -hmm. So how many times have you personally been to the stern section, PH? It's hard to say, but probably more than a half of the time of my dives. I mean, it's probably 15 times because generally we were divided always a dive in a part of looking at the wreck. And I will say sometime we were on the, on the bow, sometime on the stern, mm -hmm. sometime at both of them. That's why I was there many, many times. And for example, in 1998, what I did, we put a camera on the side of the sub and I do eight loop around the stern, coming up and down, up and down and turning. And with all this picture, a uh, guy was doing like a photo mosaic of the stern section. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw a lot of difference, you know, turning around because I was looking at all the detail. And the last time uh, I was there, I saw a lot of difference, you know, that was in, uh, I was, we were not diving because the last time it was in 2010, but I had a lot of video of that. And I saw some difference between 98 and 2010, a lot of difference, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, from what I've been told that the stern section is, you know, one of the least visited parts of the wreck. Um, can you speak as to why expeditions typically don't go to the stern um, or it's yeah, it's it's particular. because you know the bow section is much is better. You know you can recognize a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Other third section is much harder. I even you will see if I describe what we see, there is some part you can kind of see what it is because she just wall going down and down and down. But what I remember that's why I was talking that at the beginning in 1987, what I was going. I was visiting the stern. Sometimes I didn't know where I was. I was almost lost inside because there was a big wall on each side, you know, and I don't know where I was. But now it's easy, but in some part it's very difficult because you see, you can see, for example, the haft mast is still there. You can see um, a bunker hatch, which mm -hmm. is probably number five or number six, I'm not 100% sure because they were very close from each other. The other one, you don't see it because it was probably covered by a, uh, something with follow on it. I, we saw some uh, electric crane, you know, that mean, and I'm sure of that because you, all, uh, you can see even the fuse inside the electric crane, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, and some detail like that. And of course, the poop, you know, I mean, you can still see the propeller. You can see very well the propeller. And there is some uh, on the top, above the propeller on the deck, on the half deck, there is some uh, coral. Mm -hmm. And I look at this coral for 34 years, and they are growing and growing. And now they're absolutely beautiful because they're like about, I will say, almost two feet high, like a big coral. And it's, I, I took picture and I have picture, you know, different uh, years. Because this time I'm going to the stern, I'm, I want to look at them mm -hmm. because I saw them growing and growing. And, I'm, and now there are much more than at the beginning. At the beginning, there were like two or three little white stuff. Mm -hmm. That's it. And now I tell you, there are big like that, you know, with a beautiful coral open and uh, they are absolutely stunning, you know. Wow. Wow. Um, it's such a you have such a unique perspective having seen it over what three three and a half decades um so that's really exciting well i know that this video has done really well on our youtube and we have a lot of people watching it um so i think they'll really enjoy being able to hear um you point out different features because like you said it is really hard to tell what is what um so i'm gonna click over to the video now and start that playing i'll make myself smaller let's have this go and let's play the video and then I'll ask you a couple more questions at the end, um, but we'll roll into our stern section video now.
Okay, now the, the sub is almost in the middle of the stern, at the axe of the stern, uh, starting from the reciprocative engine. We don't see them because they are behind the, the sub and going to the half deck in the direction of the half deck. And here on the left, there is like a little uh, black uh, window, which and close to that, there is even a part of the bottom of the ship with a water intake that one of the wall will fall down. Uh, you know, is very close from the, the part that was the third class area, you know, on the, on, on the deck, second class and uh, and uh, first class area. I think that coming is probably, yes, it is uh, one uh, bunker hatch. I don't know if it is number five or number six, because there were four of them on the back, two on the side and they are not like that, but that is one of the number five or number six. After that, you have some, uh, it's probably a part of the, I don't know if a uh, wall will fall down. That is not, you can see a Galatea, which is like a crab, a white one. There are a lot of animals on, uh, on the stern. That could be, but full of stuff. See, it was a hatch. If it's a, the first one was a five, this one could be the six, just uh, on the bottom. And that is because after the ash number six, the deck go up. And now we are on the higher part of the aft section. And on the right side, there is a piece of concrete that's from the floor. That is a part is upside down because you can see the beam that is the ceiling of something, you know, of, uh, or a side. You, you see on the side there is like an opening. There is a big pipe here. And you see all this kind of string. That is a like a coral. And there are fishing uh, plankton or microscope stuff, you know, with little uh, air they have on uh, everywhere, like a, a very small uh, anemona. At a different view, still uh, going to the back of the ship. That this uh, wall, uh, uh, you know, I don't know exactly what it is, because it's hard, you can see all the it's not a rivet, but it's something where was, uh, and you can see the, the reinforcement, you know, on the side, on the left side, and uh, on the other side, it could be, uh, it, it's also a wall of somewhere, but it's not the hull itself. It's too thin to be, to be the hull. In, uh, on the other side of the ship is almost in, close to the middle. And that you have some hole, that the port hole is a part of the structure you fall, which fall down. It's very, very hard to know what it is. If you want to know, you have to turn around and go on the side and going back. Back and forth like that, you can see which level you are exactly, and uh, with a good drawing, you can decide where and found where exactly the sub and what it is. That, and all the, the stern section is like that, and around the stern section, you have also in the debris field huge pieces of metal everywhere. That in this part, I will say the the bottom itself, the sediment, is uh, maybe uh, 20 feet 
That on the right side is one of the electric crane, is a base of the electric crane. And they were on the stern section, you, you had a six electric crane like that. And you can see that the, the where is a, the beam is attached and you see like a little square panel on it. And uh, when the sub will be closed, you can see even some fuse on the electric fuse, you know, the round stuff, the little one, that's a whole kind of uh, fuse. You see the two little round stuff and uh, that fuse. And you have all the connection, the electric connection above. Uh, you can see some, uh, there are some uh, wire are unplugged. That electric crane and the beam was attached to this uh, round part to the left, but it's uh, almost falling down. That's completely the aft of the ship. Now the sub turn and is going back in the direction of the reciprocative engine. And that's what you see in front with a kind of long beam that the deck was upside down and fall on the, the half. And there was a, on the right side, just before there was like a fair lead that shows that it's the half deck because it's where the rope we're using to attach the, ship to the pier and that is all the, the it was a ceiling of uh, close to the third class entrance and all this part and uh, it's a huge part which is uh, you know upside down and at the end of this uh, part you will see that it's going like around a and you don't see anything on the other side because it's not very deep but as a sub you don't have a, a camera we can go down, you don't see the bottom. That there is a railing, you see the railing here, with three bars, and a part of the railing, uh, which is around the uh, down section. This beam, uh, the one with perpendicular to the other one, is probably the middle of the ship. And you can see the concrete for, we were saying that the other way. I don't know if you remember, but one time there is this, uh, and that is now where the stuff is going down. And uh, on the previous uh, picture, we, the sub was going 180 degrees the other side. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. I, I mean, there's so much more to see there. Um, was there anything in that video that you thought was surprising or something that you weren't expecting looking at the stern after? No, no, but you know, there are still a lot of stuff we can, but you know, with the de deterioration, what happened, uh, sometimes you have new hole and you can see more inside. And I'm sure in uh, next year, I will, uh, next year, this year, this mm -hmm. summer, I would like yeah. to go back to, because I, I, I love the, the stern section because it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And watching and watching video, I I learned a lot because, you know, if, when you are, and after it's easy for me to see more detail because I know where I am, I know what I have a chance to see. And it's very interesting for that. And more and more, I think we will see inside of the ship in because you are still have uh not everything is not collapsing already mm -hmm. like uh, there is one part and what we were above that really was hard to see and if you go a little bit on the side you can see some uh, window is not porthole is window because they are above the, the main deck and you can see there is still like five or six of them Mm -hmm. And I, I would like to see if they are still there, you know, <laughs> or if they, they collapse. And uh, it's it's an interesting part because it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so the corals that you were talking about too, I wanted to ask, are those those long white ribbon? No, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's coral. But the one I'm talking, it looks like, uh, you know, uh, Marconi. Yeah. The, they have like uh, on some, uh, uh, the old system for playing a disc and stuff like that, you know, the, the, I will say was uh, the logo of Marconi was a oh. big, like a trumpet or something yeah, like that. Yeah. But that's uh, the kind of stuff. But they are like now two feet high with a beautiful, uh, I can send you, uh, I, I sent some picture of that to Alex because okay. she like, uh, and they are unbelievable because now they are so beautiful and they are big and they are wide like that, you know, and uh, they are like one specially. So the ones that are smaller, but you can see that a lot, a lot of growing around and maybe in, uh, I don't know, 100 years or <laughs> I don't know. So this part will be completely covered. Actually, they are fixed on a on a on a tank. I don't know. It's probably a water tank, a small water tank above this. This, this deck was you know upside down. It was probably this uh, tank was attached to the ceiling of uh, I don't know where. And now, of course, it's the other side. And they are growing on this. Uh, on this uh, tank and they are, you, you can see them from far because they are, as they are white, as soon as you use the light of the sub, boom, you, you, they pop up very well. Well, I'm excited for us to return this year because we have all the marine biologists that are coming, especially with our eDNA study, mm -hmm. seeing all what is down there. So that's I mean, a very interesting. I before, but now I'm even more so. Um, but I have one more question here and then I'll let you go because I know you've got other things. Um, but since it is, uh, we're getting closer and closer to the 110th anniversary of the sinking. Um, why do you think Titanic has had such a pull on our attention for the last 110 years? I will say that's a very good question that I, I'm asking to myself very often. But more and more, I'm thinking that is because everybody can find something interesting at the beginning. You know, I mean, you have people that are interested in the, in the construction of the Titanic because it was a new one, a beautiful one. And you have also people that like the story of the passenger, the rich, or the one for the immigrant, or the one they like story of the crew, you know, about equipment of the ship. Everybody can find something. And when you start to put your nose in the Titanic, you can get out after you're stuck on it, you know, and uh, because it's from my point of view, I don't know another event who is like a hundred years old mm -hmm. and so many people are interested in, even the young, young kid. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I'm doing the lecture, you know, there is little girl, a little boy, like seven, eight years. They ask me questions. Even sometimes I, I feel they, they know much more than me, you know, because they, they have very interesting questions that never heard. I, I like that because the kids they have sometimes questions. They don't uh, think, oh, my question will be bad or anything like that. They ask you the question. Mm -hmm. They are very spontaneous. You know, sometimes they call me, oh, I have a stupid question. See, there is no stupid question, you know, so it doesn't exist, you know. And, and the kids are very good for that because they ask you questions. Sometimes I say, they explain to me sometimes, and I say, oh, maybe you're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I say sometimes I say to some kids, hey, you know more than me about the yeah. story. You know? And I don't know, think of that. If you know any event, uh, I don't know, any kind of event, even when the people go to the Everest, okay, uh, part of the population like it, but there are people that say, we don't care about that. But the Titanic, uh, from people from, uh, I will say, seven to eight years old, uh, you, you can find people interested in the Titanic for a, any different reason at the beginning. And after, more you learn about the Titanic, more you like to go in different directions.